Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Kavya. I am one of the Dean's team members. This is Henry. He's also. I'm a sophomore in civil engineering or rising junior, I guess. Yeah. I am a rising senior in materials engineering, material science and engineering. And today we're going to be talking about the College of Engineering of Virginia Tech, the different majors, and hope you get familiarized with the department. So today we're going to be talking about kind of what it takes to be an engineer at Virginia Tech, what are the kind of requirements and things that uh, when you apply, the university is going to be looking towards. So their creativity, teamwork, study habits, an interest in math and science, and then a challenging background. So Virginia Tech wants to see like that you are a creative person, you're really engaged with learning different things and looking at problems and situations from an out-of-the-box perspective. Uh, teamwork is another big thing. We are a school that really thrives on working on group projects. Um, in your first year, you'll be doing a group project that will make you interact with different people, and you're going to have to come up with really interesting ideas, study habits, other than you still have to study and do all these classes and everything like that. So developing a good study, developing good study habits will help you succeed in your classes and throughout your career at Virginia Tech. Uh, also an interest in math and science, since all of you are interested in becoming engineers, a interest in math and science is very important to helping you understand your material and gain a, uh, a love for what you eventually do. And finally, a challenging high school background, such as doing honors courses, AP, or the IB classes and getting involved with different extracurricular activities that really show you show this university what kind of person you are. So just a little snapshot of the freshman class of 2019. So these are uh, students who just came in this past fall as freshmen. Uh, on a 5.0 scale, the average reported GPA was a 4.2. And then the average SAT scores, uh, you can see for math and reading, 707 and 65. It's important to note that Virginia Tech does not have a minimum uh, SAT score requirement. So uh, obviously, having a higher score is better for your application, but it's not like you have to meet a certain threshold um, to apply. And it was the class had 20.7% females and then 29.4% um, uh, underrepresented minority students. So while you come here as a freshman engineering student, you guys will all be kind of put on the same playing field. Uh, as you may know, that you won't be in your individual engineering, you'll be a general engineering student. And this really helps uh, freshmen kind of get a vibrant and flexible experience within their freshman year, engage with different types of engineering and different, um, different kind of things that help them get interested in whatever engineering that they wanna focus in. So you'll be doing a pathways curriculum that involves a total of 45 credits over seven core concepts. And that'll help you get a really holistic education. And you'll be able to choose which categories you want to do your pathways curriculum in. And then by the end of your freshman year, so that'll be the end of spring, you'll be able to choose which, um, which major you want to be selected in. Typically, if you have a 3.0 or above, by the end of your freshman year, you will get your first choice. And if it is lower, you'll be put on like a wait, not necessarily a wait list, but you'll be put on a list and then they will choose based on your first, second, and third choice. So uh, Foundations of Engineering is one of those common point entry classes for your freshman year. So you'll take it in your fall um, and your spring semesters uh, and you're gonna be a little bit different each semester you take it. So in these classes, you're gonna learn some of the fundamental uh, needs of an engineer like design and teamwork, um, graphing, problem solving, and a lot of things that you'll use regardless of what kind of engineering major you go into. Uh, one highlight for the Foundation of Engineering class is in the spring, you are given a group project where you're supposed to construct something based upon what, what you're assigned. So in my group project, we had to create a vertical wind turbine. I know some people who had to make um, drones, and so they're actually able to complete a whole flying drone. They were provided engines, but everything else they had to make themselves, and they had to design and fabricate um, and test and make sure that it would work. And they're able to actually go out and fly their drones. Uh, and like for our windmills, we're actually able to measure how much power our, our vertical wind turbines uh, created. That's just part of the foundation of engineering experience. So this is an, a snapshot of undergraduate enrollment. So our biggest majors are typically for our aerospace, computer science, mechanical engineering, 
And the 3,090 uh, number that you see above for engineering education is not an actual major. It's just all the freshmen. So that is a number for fall 2019 of all the freshman students. And these are the ones who haven't declared their major specifically yet. So now we're going to go through all the different degree granting, de 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 sorry, degree granting majors that Virginia Tech offers. And our first step is electrical engineering. So electrical engineering is all about the individual circuits and wires and components that make up all of these uh, things that we use every single day. So in our cell phones and our computers, or just in a little cross uh, walk light button that you press, all these little pieces are about uh, what electrical engineers deal with. And it's not so much about how they, they work with computers and how they think together, but how these individual circuits, their efficiencies, and almost the physics behind them to some extent. So you can see that you work with electrical systems, communication systems, uh, electrical controls, and there are a lot of jobs in industries like power and energy, of course, uh, microelectronics and semiconductors. And it really deals with trying to take like a, a singular system and compacting it down and doing the same thing in smaller space or being able to do the same function, but with greater efficiency. That's what electrical engineering is all about. So computer science is the science of understanding and developing software to develop different operational systems, to designing software for the government, to making applications on iPhones and things like that. Um, it's a really interesting major. There's a lot of different um, subsets of computer science that you can go into that you'll be able to explore while you are studying computer science. Some areas of study that are people a lot, a lot of people go into are artificial intelligence, AI, uh, cybersecurity, computing, um, big data, things like that. Really kind of broad and really interesting things that are going on and very important in today's current society. So the Department of the Virginia Tech uh, Computer Science Department does offer a five-year BS MS track. So if you are interested in going to grad school, but not necessarily going outside of Virginia Tech and taking a longer um, track, you can do a five-year program and it is um, pretty flexible in terms of that. Uh, some job types that students uh, typically go into after they graduate are software design and development, uh, mobile applications development, game design, computer security, cybersecurity. And this list is, um, it can be pretty exhaustive in terms of what type of jobs you go into. It can really range. Computer science is a broad field, and there is basically a need for computer scientists in every single industry. So the possibilities are endless with this major. So if you imagine that you have electrical engineering on one end of the spectrum, and you have computer science on the other end, where one is all about the hardware and one's all about the software, computer engineering is where they kind of meet in the middle, where a computer engineer will look at how hardware interacts with software, and how these can be combined in the different ways that they work together. So my favorite example of computer engineering is there's, you guys have heard of Life Alert, right? There's the I fall and I can't get up, you press the button on the little necklace. Um, there are actually, there's been research done into alternatives for Life Alert, which involve even less uh, interaction, it's more automatic. So this works with pressure sensing fabric. So you have a smart fabric that a computer engineer would create and the smart fabric is able to detect changes in pressure. And through these changes in pressure, it can signal uh, to uh, like call 911 if a very significant change in pressure is detected uh, without having to someone to press the button because that they might not be able to do that if they've been injured. That's just one example of an application of computer engineering. Um, and really it's all about the kind of occupying that little space between electrical engineering and computer science uh, with the hardware computer systems uh, communications, and a whole lot more. So biological systems and engineering is a really unique major where um, it combines biology, chemistry, and engineering to solve different problems associated with environmental protection, conservation of natural resources, protection of renewable resources, and um, applications in pharmaceutical polymers, biofuels. There's a large focus on agriculture, ecosystems, and food sciences within this major where there are two main tracks that students can follow, typically biomedical, where you learn more about composite materials and biomaterials and their relation in society, versus a green track, where you focus more on sustainable land development, water resource management, and different um, aspects of that kind of ground. Within this major, many students uh, pursue a professional health school track, 
So a lot of them end up going to med school and this specific type of engineering really does help you kind of get prepared for that kind of environment. Um, additionally, there is an option to do a biomed minor with this major, and it, uh, this minor more relates to internal forces within the body, like ACL tears and the interaction between the human body and things like that. But it is a very interesting major that lot, you can do a lot of things with. Um, typical jobs that students can go into, if not going into med school or anything like that, are nonprofit organizations, uh, food processing, and watershed management. So the next program we'll be looking at is chemical engineering. So chemical engineering is all about the study of chemistry, but not so much just what the research into chemistry, but trying to find real world applications of these chemical uh, properties and in, uh, in physics of chemicals. So one highlight of the chemical engineering program that we have at Virginia Tech is the summer program um, for, I think it's rising seniors after their junior year, they're able to go to either Denmark or Germany for a summer research program. And they're able to work in a real chemical lab uh, alongside actual chemical engineers. And that's a great hands-on experience that we have uh, here at Tech, being able to actually work in a real-world environment, uh, which is part of your, your curriculum. Um, and there are a lot of opportunities in chemical engineering, because if you think about something like a manufacturing plants, if you're trying to manufacture steel or something, that's going to be all about the different chemicals and ways that you can work with that. Um, all sorts of manufacturing jobs, but also environmental quality, uh, uh, food, uh, healthcare products, pharmaceuticals. Uh, so there are a whole lot of opportunities in chemical engineering, uh, along with consumer products, ceramics. Um, well, if you, if you can think of it, it's got chemicals in it, chemical engineering. So materials engineering, this is my major. Um, basically, what we learn is how to develop materials and um, selecting appropriate materials for a wide range of applications. The main things that we do study are the properties and structure of materials so we can better apply them to different situations. One really cool thing about MSC is that there are a lot of hands-on opportunities within this major. We take a lab almost every single semester once you um, declare that major. Um, some really cool examples are working in a foundry, um, working with uh, metal shops, doing really cool things like that. So there is a really um, heavy example on hands-on work within this major. Some of the possible areas of study you can go into are typically metals, polymers, and ceramics, and then the kind of combined um, subsets of those composites, nuclear materials, electronic materials, and biomaterials. One really cool thing about this major is that we helped um, Virginia Tech win the ACC championship. So in the picture on the bottom right, that is Cedric Hume, who was a running back and he broke his arm. And there were some regulations that he couldn't use a typical cast for playing football, but the MSC department created material for this cast where it was soft enough not to be considered a weapon, which would be thing, something that would disqualify him from playing. And um, with that cast, he was able to help the team win in 2007. So kind of fun fact about MSC and its um, contribution to Virginia Tech. Some typical job types that you can, jobs that MSC students go into are the met metallurgical, uh, engineering, aerospace, uh, semiconductors, defense, biomaterials, polymers, and like to also working at chemical companies as well. So the next major we're going to look at is mining and minerals engineering. So you might see the picture on the lower right there at the explosions. You might think, oh, they just do explosions. That's it. But it's actually a lot more than that. So you can see the six steps there on the left from exploration to reclamation. Um, and it's, it's more than just the explosions, but that might be the highlight. So you can see that as a mining and minerals engineer, there's a lot of, there's a whole process and a procedure that you have to go through from exploring the different options of sites that you can look at, um, seeing which site might be the most efficient for the economics of what the, the company that you're presenting is looking for. Developments are actually you know, making the explosions, developing the mine, um, and then taking these minerals that you get, processing them, uh, and then finding the most efficient ways to get the valuable assets out of these, these minerals, uh, and then re restoring them, so getting them back into a responsible environmental condition after extracting minerals. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities in mining engineering. This is actually one of the majors that we have at Tech. It's one of a couple, actually. that has 100% job placement after graduation, 
uh, because mining engineering is not a very common program. Um, if it if there was rankings, uh, we mining engineering would definitely be in the top five, um, but there's just not enough programs in the country for it to for there even to really be rankings. So it's a great program, very unique program. Um, that's not you're not going to see it a lot of places. Uh, one thing that makes Virginia Tech engineering special. So you're able to go with a mining engineering program. Uh, sorry, major. You're able to go into mine scheduling, supervision, mine design, equipment selection, uh, mineral purification, um, among other opportunities. So I'm in civil engineering. I might be a little bit biased, but I think this is uh, the, the best major here. I think the best way to describe engineering is all about just infrastructure. But it's not just building it. It's also designing and maintaining said infrastructure. And my favorite thing about civil engineering is how broad of a major it is. So there are eight different areas. So there's everything from construction to geotechnical to material sciences. So you can kind of see how it overlaps a little bit. Like environmental might be similar to biological systems engineering, and then materials might be similar to material science and engineering. So I think civil engineering, like when I came in, I originally wanted to do transportation. It's all about traffic flows and how highways work. But I realized after my internship this past summer uh, that I actually wanted to go into land development. And because of the wide varieties of opportunities, I was actually able to transition into land development uh, without having to like switch majors or something. Um, and as you can see, there are a lot of varieties uh, within civil engineering. And I the curriculum is set up so that you have to take one intro class in six of those eight focus areas. So you're able to learn about a wide variety of different focus areas within civil. Um, and in some of the, the opportunities that we have here at Tech, you can see in the top right, there's a, a guy working on a little model bridge there. That's for the steel bridge design team. The student-led design team will be talking about that later. Uh, but they compete. They make a, about a 20-foot-long steel bridge every single year and compete against other universities, uh, weighing hundreds or even thousands of pounds of weight on the bridge. And then you can see there in the lower right is a self-driving car from some, some years back. And in the background there, you can kind of see is the Virginia Tech Smart Road. So that is a climate-controlled road that we have just off campus here. If you're going on 460, you might be able to see it's kind of hidden. And it's very special because you're able to create artificial snow, rain, change the temperatures. And through those kinds of controlled conditions that we have, uh, a lot of companies like to come and test some of their vehicles or self-driving vehicles uh, and see how they work in a close environment that is able to simulate a lot of different conditions. So construction engineering and management is one of those unique majors that you won't typically see at any other institutions. It was started from industry and industry investors and people who are have good ties to Virginia Tech wanted to see a major in students who were involved with civil engineering, but also had a business background, which kind of birthed this idea of construction engineering and management, where it's a combination of um, civil engineering, building construction, and business. So this program focuses on all four sections of this industry, which is residential, commercial, industry, and heavy. So basically what people in this major are learning is how to plan, direct, and coordinate different construction projects. Um, it's a really interesting major because it's kind of like the crossroads of all these different um, uh, industries and um, engineering, which kind of make it really, which do make it really unique. Like mining engineering, it does have 100% job placement with after graduation and typically most seniors who graduate with this degree will get more than five offers from companies because there are not many people who specialize with in that field. And fun fact about this major, you do get to wear a hard hat at graduation kind of stand out against any for everyone else, which is kind of fun to see. Um, some typical jobs that uh, students go into are a, becoming project engineers, field engineers, construction managers, and anything within that realm. So the next major we're looking at is aerospace and ocean engineering. And these two are kind of paired up because if you think uh, about it, air is kind of like just a less viscous version of water in some ways. So there's a lot of overlap, especially in some of the more core classes. So in aerospace and ocean engineering, you get to look at aerodynamics, hydrodynamics, uh, propulsion, flight mechanics, flight control. So airplanes, ships, and even um, air, um, spacecraft, uh, you're able to look at in aerospace and ocean engineering. Um, there's also the option to double major with aero and ocean. Um, and one of the greatest assets that we have here is a wind tunnel uh, at Tech. So this is actually a formerly NASA had this wind tunnel, but now we have it. 
and is the largest collegiate wind tunnel in the country. And you can see in the lower left there, that's Jim Cantor uh, Cantori. He is a famous uh, national weatherman, and he came to test this uh, wind tunnel at Virginia Tech. You see there in 2009. He's got a quite decent little bit of hair going on there. Then he comes back, uh, a little bit less hair, but he goes all the way up to a Category 5 hurricane wind. You can see his skin flapping a little bit. Uh, that's the power of the largest collegiate wind tunnel in the entire country. Um, it's a really cool program. If you come and visit campus um, inside of Goodwin Hall, you can see it there on the upper left, we have a gigantic aircraft engine hanging from the ceiling. Um, when I first saw it, my, my jaw kind of dropped a little bit. It's, it looks even bigger in person. Um, but aerospace engineering, some opportunities once you graduate, you can go into structural analysis, design engineering, naval architecture, underwater vehicle development, and a whole lot more. So mechanical engineering is kind of that jack of all trades engineering, like the Swiss army knife of engineering. Um, it's really broad, but there are really good things about it being broad. Um, it's that major where you can, you learn to apply the principles of motion, energy, and heat, and then design, construct, and operate different machines, devices, things like that. It's a very hands-on major where you will be encouraged to join design teams, um, like uh, so many design teams at Virginia Tech, and you will be encouraged as a mechanical engineering student to get involved with these groups because they kind of help you apply the material that you learn in class. Um, with this major, you are able to tailor your technical electives to focus on certain topics where you can even do, if you are on a design team, you can make your capstone project um, part of your design team experience. So the typical topics that you will learn while a mechanical engineering student where you can also tailor these to whatever you are interested in are acoustics, aeronautics, any, anything from that to nuclear engineering, robotics, smart materials, power generation. So if you are unsure about what major you want to go into when you declare your major at the end of freshman year, this is a good major to think about because you will be able to kind of take the time to focus on whatever um, you're interested in within mechanical engineering. Next is biomedical engineering. So this is actually a relatively recent program here at Tech. We just had, this fall was the start of our first cohort, we call it. So the first group of uh, sophomores going to the program. Um, but this coming fall is going to be our second group. And it's actually, it started off only 40 students came in, were able to be accepted as sophomores. But then I think it's 60, then 80, and it's kind of ramping up pretty quickly. Um, and so it's, it's quickly becoming its own fully-fledged major. Uh, and it's a really special program because for a long time we had biolog biological spe uh, systems engineering, excuse me, and we had a biomedical engineering minor. But the biomedical engineering minor was so popular that the Virginia Tech Engineering Department realized people wanted a whole entire biomedical engineering major. So BMU was born. Um, so biomedical engineering is all about the mechanics of the human body, um, different kinds of medicine, biomaterials, and how different engineering technologies can be applied to it. So looking at biology, chemistry, medicine, physics, and engineering all combined into one. Um, you can go into biomedical imaging, cardiovascular engineering, um, nanomedicine and nanoengineering, um, cancer research, tons of different opportunities that um, that tech has actually had for a long time, just not really compartmentalized into its own whole major. Um, so some jobs that you can go into, you can work with medical devices, um, automotive and military safety, um, sports medicine and sports safety consulting, um, and then also advanced degree programs like going to medical school, school out right outside of, uh, right after you're getting your bachelor's degree. So industrial systems and industrial and systems engineering is one of those other really unique uh, majors here at Virginia Tech. It's kind of a, kind of can be called uh, human engineering, where it's um, a bridge of engineering and business. So in this major, you will learn to focus on optimization of complex systems and learn to improve the quality and productivity of different systems and operations. The goal in, within this major is to learn how to make things faster, stronger, and more efficient, and eliminating waste that doesn't generate a value, such as within, uh, say, manufacturing, reducing cost, time, materials, man hours, and energy. It's also one of those really broad majors where you can focus on real, a lot of different things like human factors and ergonomics to consulting, operation, research, and manufacturing. Almost every company will hire um, ISC majors, 
it's really integral in every type of industry, especially within manufacturing, because they help with the running of these plants. And typically for this major, the capstone project or the senior design project comes directly from industry. So you get experience on how the real, how um, the real world works. Some jobs that you can go into after graduation are consulting, manufacturing, um, healthcare, transportation, cost analysis. It is a really broad major, which makes it really unique. Right. So there's also this um, tool that we have here called Explore Engineering. So if you just Google Explore Engineering Virginia Tech, it'll come up with this link. Um, and you'll, I'm not sure we'll be able to click on it right now, because I think it'll open a separate window. But Explore Engineering is basically a breakdown of all the different um, engineering majors that we have. And along with the major, it talks about some minors that you might want to take with it. Uh, it can offer a lot of insight if you're trying to decide like which one you're thinking. And maybe you want to go into materials, but I'm also looking at mechanical. What makes them different? And it'll give some descriptions of job opportunities after graduating. Um, and I thought it was definitely helpful my freshman year um, to learn about each kind of different engineering major. So the Virginia Tech Engineering Department also offers uh, different opportunities, including a range of minors. So you can minor in any of these type of engineering. A lot of people minor in cybersecurity and green engineering. Those are typically the most popular. Also computer science. Um, there's also study abroad opportunities within uh, the engineering department. There is something called RSAP, which is Rising Sophomore Abroad Program, where you go to different companies around the world. Um, typically, they, spent, they group them in regional areas. So some students may go to South America, some students may go to um, Europe, uh, China, New Zealand, and Australia, and Morocco and Spain. Um, these are really interesting because it helps you gain a international understanding of engineering and how different countries practice their engineering and gives you a more holistic understanding of how engineering can be done in different situations and how you can apply those concepts in your own education and future and future after graduation. Um, there's also many opportunities for undergraduate research. A lot of professors have projects that they want to work on and will offer, um, will like that students can offer their help and they will typically pay them or you can do undergraduate research for credit. There's also a plethora of engineering professional societies and organizations, anything from fraternities to um, specialized engineering clubs and organizations that you can get involved in. Um, also, there is a OSHO that um, I think that's at the beginning, a little bit before classes start, where you can really go and understand different majors. You can learn about different clubs within engineering and kind of gain a bigger understanding about what all things that the engineering department offers. So on here, we have just a list of co-ops and internship experiences that members of the dean's team um, have had. So Kavi and I are both part of the dean's team. It's a group of about 40 students. Um, and we're all undergrad students who volunteer our time to just represent the College of Engineering. And so this is just a showcase of some of those opportunities that that relatively small group of students have had all across the country, from California back all the way to Virginia, um, as far north as Washington, as far, far south as Florida. So as you can see, all sorts of recognizable names to like uh, SpaceX or um, 3M or IBM, uh, all sorts of different opportunities and different uh, majors and fields. So this really goes to show that companies, not just in the East Coast, but all over the country and from all different fields, uh, recognize how strong the program is here at Virginia Tech and the kind of reputable quality um, that Virginia Tech engineers have and how desirable they are, uh, not only in like a, a job after graduation, but also in internships and co-ops uh, before you've even um, finished your, your degree program. So there is also many opportunities for support outside of the classroom that the engineering department offers. So there are career fairs that are held um, throughout the year. The biggest are for engineering students are in our engineering expo. There is one in September in the fall, and then there is one also in the spring. This is where around 300 companies will come to Virginia Tech and specifically hire Hokies to work with their companies full time or for internships. It's a really great way to network and get 
um, more experience for whatever you want to do. There are also career fairs like Hokies, Higher Hokies, and um, the Spring Engineering Career Fair is Cameo, and about 100 plus companies will come to that. It's a really good opportunity, and a lot of people find it a really engaging experience. Um, there is also STEP, which is a which is the Student Transition Engineering Program. So it's kind of this program where it's supposed to bridge life in college as an engineering student. And uh, students in this program will come their summer before uh, their freshman year and take the first five weeks of some of your general ed, general ed classes like calculus, chemistry, and um, your introductory engineering course. And it will help you kind of gain an understanding of how difficult or easy or just in general how the first year of college will be for you. So it kind of helps you know where you are and what you need to do and how hard you need to work to be successful. Um, a lot of another really good thing about this program is it helps you develop good study habits and time management skills ahead of time before everything can get stressful with school. You can meet some of your professors who will be teaching the course in the fall and it can help you with AP transfers if that is something that you need. Uh, there's also Hypation Galileo, which is a really in cool program. Um, these are learning, li living learning communities um, where there is a dorm called Lee Hall where these communities are kind of stationed at and everyone in that dorm is an engineering student. Uh, it's really, really, uh, cool. I did it for two years. I'm also involved with um, managing it now. And it's really nice because it helps you connect with other engineering students and it helps you with classes and it kind of helps you bond, help with assignments, projects. It helps you kind of adjust to college life. And there are many um, additional support systems within Hypation and Galileo that help you be successful. Um, within this program, you also have access to upperclassmen leaders who serve as mentors and community members. So if you're, you like the program your freshman year, you can apply to be a um, upperclassman within the program and help run um, the program itself. So some of the events that and support activities that the Living Learning, Living Learning Community runs are academic support, uh, social events, service learning projects, and professional development. And it also helps, and that really helps you um, be a better student, not just in your freshman year, but in your years after. And finally, there is peer mentoring. So this is the oldest program that is offered at, out of the engineering department. It's a 10 week commitment program. Not It's not um, binding or anything like that, but it's open to all incoming freshmen at no cost where a, a mentor will help you and guide you in your first 10 weeks of college. Um, you'll get opportunities for like free food, resume help, um, preparation for the career fairs that will happen. Um, you'll learn time management skills and they will give you access to different campus resources where you can get tutoring and things like that. And they will help you with selecting your major, which can really help since the, help with because um, an upperclassman will be giving you advice and things like that. So hands-on, minds-on. So I mentioned design teams a little bit earlier, and this is all about the different kinds of design teams that we have. So as you can see there on the list, it's about a little over a dozen teams are listed here. That We have so many more uh, than just what's listed here. Design teams at Tech, I guess I should back up a little bit. They are um, student-run organizations, which usually have a faculty member uh, as a mentor, but that's they're just as a mentor there. Um, so it's a completely student-run they are students are volunteering their time to work for all these different kinds of projects that they have. Uh, it's the students who design, who build, who test. Um, and ultimately it's the students who compete with all these different um, teams that they, they are volunteering their time for. So you can just see a small selection there on the bottom left is concrete canoe team. So they create a canoe out of concrete and it floats and they paddle it around. They go paddling practice every Sunday um, and they compete with different teams in the region with whoever has the fastest and best looking concrete canoe. You can also see there on the, the right, a little bit towards the bottom, the Chevrolet Camaro. Um, that is the uh, hybrid electric vehicle or 
I think, yeah, I think that's hybrid electric vehicle team. They take a Chevrolet Camaro and they turn it into a, I think it's a hybrid electric vehicle. So they take out the original engine and they completely reconfigure this car with their partnership with Chevy. Um, and they're able to construct this completely new power train system. You also see in the upper right is the human powered submarine team. Uh, they take a submarine and you can't see it because it's completely orange, but on the inside there is a person in there paddling along like with their feet. Uh, they do have safety divers and stuff. It's um, well-managed, but they um, have a person who is guiding their submarine and they compete against uh, other universities. You can also see in the uh, top left there is, I think that's Formula SAE team where they basically build a race car and they compete against other schools. And then in the middle is Baja. They build a dune buggy. Um, so all sorts of different design opportunities. There's pretty much an opportunity for every major in these. Uh, it's mostly, uh, there's mostly mechanical engineering and electrical and a few others, but pretty much every major has their own design team. There's a whole bunch of variety uh, that students can get involved in. And it's not just the kind of thing that juniors and seniors do either. These teams are always looking for new freshmen and sophomore members because before you know it, freshmen and uh, and sophomores turn into juniors and seniors, uh, and then they've been taking those advanced level classes. They're always looking for people who are passionate and want to be able to contribute to these teams. So it's definitely not something for only upperclassmen. It's something that's open for everybody. Uh, and I've got a lot of friends who are part of uh, design teams. They, they said it's been a great opportunity. So not only does BT have really good programs, we're also ranked pretty high in terms of um, our education. So we're ranked 13 in best undergraduate programs among engineering schools nationwide. For our graduate programs, we're ranked 31, which is pretty high in, um, in terms of that scale. We're ranked number seven for producers of engineers. So this is um, students who do go out into the job market with bachelor degrees. So that's another good thing. And we're ranked number eight for the producer of women engineers. So that is really important to you to see other women um, go and be successful within engineering. Virginia Tech does put a lot of emphasis on that. And now some outcomes. So what happens after you graduated? You've gotten your degree and everything. Um, so over the past five years, um, before, I mean, before you've even graduated, over the past five years, the average is 90% of freshmen continue into their second year in engineering. So freshman year, uh, I think engineering has that reputation. That is a lot of weed out classes, a lot of busy work, and they just want you to drop out of engineering and go home. Um, but it's really not the case. Uh, there's so many support structures that we talked about earlier. And as you can see, 90% of engineers continuing into their second year, I think, is great, uh, especially for how challenging the program can be. And also, I think that number jumps up, I think, to 99%. If you live in the Galileo or Hypatia living learning communities that we mentioned earlier. Um, so it's, it's definitely not um, some sort of weed out program. There's so many support structures for uh, people to continue on, not only through their second year, but through their graduation. Then once you graduate, so for the class of 2019, this is a self-reported survey out of the people who, um, who answered. 74% are employed, uh, I think within six months after graduation. 13% um, uh, plan to attend graduate school or have accepted admission. Uh, and then for those who are employed, there is a median starting salary of $70,000 for the class of 2019. So I think there's some pretty cool results. and um, for the kind of education that you get at Virginia Tech and opportunities that come after um, is really a great combination. So Virginia Tech does offer scholarship opportunities. We all know that college can be pretty expensive. So for freshmen, they offer um, basic uh, four different opportunities, the Davenport Leadership Scholarship, the Pratt Engineering Scholarship. Um, I'm not sure if those are only one-time things or I think they're both one-time um, scholarships. Um, there's also financial aid if you qualify for that. And for transfer students, um, there is the VA, Leo A. Pattis Scholarship Opportunity. And once you become an upperclassman, uh, the College of Engineering does have um, their own scholarships that they will give out to students and specific departments, so like mechanical engineering department, aerospace department, will have their own scholarships that they do offer. The really unique thing about this is that there is only one application that you have to fill out for all of these um, scholarship opportunities, except the financial aid, because you have to do a FAFSA for that. Um, but there is only one application, which does make it really easy. Um, one set of 
essay questions, one set of questions that you need to fill out. So it does help applying and getting money when you need it. So last slide here, we're gonna be talking about the computer requirements. Um, maybe it's not as flashy as an engineering major, but it definitely is important to check that you have the right uh, computer. So maybe uh, refrain from getting the Christmas gift laptop, it might be tempting, and wait until March uh, before you start classes um, to make sure that you have a computer that is up to spec, to make sure that you have all the requirements. Um, a tab, a two-in-one kind of tablet are very popular or laptops where you can fold it back and you can write on it and take notes. It can save a lot of paper and I know it can definitely help people a lot with organiz um, organizing uh, all their documents that they keep track of, different notes for different classes um, and different things that you might have to do as a student because a lot of class, a lot of notes um, keep things more organized. So I have a really new experience in terms of why I came to Virginia Tech. I'm an out-of-state student from California. So pretty far out there, but um, of all the schools that I apply to, I really like Virginia Tech because of the support system that they were willing to give to students. Um, when I was applying, many schools didn't really have the sort of program like Hypatia and Galileo, which really, really put an emphasis on helping you become successful in your freshman year and after. So that was really one of the things that I wanted to come to the College of Engineering. And I really like the programs that they were offering for materials engineering because it was very hands-on and I enjoyed the kind of um, content that they were that was coming out of that program. So the reason I came to Virginia Tech was it was pretty, it wasn't a super hard decision for me because I'm from Virginia, I'm in state um, and I'm, I wanted to do engineering. I knew I wanted to go somewhere in state because it's less expensive. Um, I knew Virginia Tech is a great program. Uh, I came to the campus, looked around. Food is amazing. Uh, was that helped my decision a lot? But it, it was just it was not the hardest decision in the world. Um, but I think the thing that I like to talk about is the reason why I stayed here at Virginia Tech. It's not just the engineering. It's not just uh, the campus looks beautiful. It's not just that the professors are so experienced and friendly. It's not just that the food's delicious. I think it's the the whole community. It's the kind of atmosphere that there is um, not only on campus, not only in Blacksburg, but uh, just talking to Hokies and Virginia Tech alum um, whenever I meet them um, out in the rest of the world. Being in Blacksburg and being on campus and the kinds of people that I've met, the people, the faculty members that I know, um, my professors that I have, I there's a very real sense of community. And I know that when I talk to people and if I ask for help, people want to help me. Uh, people want to offer support. People want to be there for you. They want to see you succeed. Uh, it's not like it's a, it's not a cutthroat community. It's not a, the only way I'm going to get to the top is by pushing you down. It's more like we're all going to succeed by doing this together. Um, that's the mindset. And that's something I think is really special about Virginia Tech, how everyone feels like they all have each other's back, uh, how it's one big family. And it sounds a little corny and I didn't really believe it at first when I heard it, but Nowadays, I start calling Blacksburg home um, more than back when I go back to Richmond. And I think that really encapsulates not only why I decided to come to Virginia Tech, but why I decided to stay. So there have been a couple of questions that have been posted in the chat and I'll go ahead and answer them. So what is the class cap? Um, I'm not sure of the entire like class of say like 2021 cap will be, but you can look at past years and kind of get a gauge what the cap is going to be on that. Um, Virginia Tech does like over accept and under accept some years. So I think this past year we over accepted. So this will be a little, the number of accepted students will be a bit lower. Um, but in terms of engineering department, you can look at past um, numbers on accepted um, students in the freshman range and you can kind of gain gauge an idea about that. Um, could you have a CCNA certification, could having a CCNA certification benefit when applying to a major like networking cybersecurity? So I'm assuming you mean computer science and like the subset, I guess, of that being networking and cybersecurity. And I'm sure that having that certification will help you kind of gain a better understanding of what you're doing and learning in class because it's it'll help you apply those um, 
equity concepts more readily. And having certification will definitely help you in terms of job searching because those are really beneficial and um, recruiters do like seeing that. So yeah. Um, during your freshman year, is there a class that gives exposure to different majors? Yeah. So your introductory engineering course. So in yeah, intro to fundamentals of fundamentals of engineering. That's the class where you'll be learning about different engineering majors, and you'll be going to different seminars about the different majors. Um, department heads, I think, if I remember, will be giving different lectures about these majors, what are the good things about them, what are really interesting, and what are they doing. So yeah, you will definitely be getting exposure. Great tips when beginning the process of writing college essays. Um, they're really daunting, I know, um, but one really good thing would be probably starting out small and maybe not putting, like kind of going into the mindset where you have to do everything at once and kind of like starting with ideas that you want to write about first. And once you have a good idea, that'll help you write things more effectively. Then you won't be kind of getting writer's block, anything like that. Um, can students double major in the School of Engineering? Can they double major with a major outside? Um, so you do, you are able to double major within engineering like for aerospace and ocean engineering because the majors are so related and a lot of the classes are similar. Um, I haven't really heard of anyone else majoring outside of that. It can be pretty difficult because the classes have their own um, subsets and different electives that you have to take. So I'm sure that you can, but it will be difficult. Um, and it also depends with how many classes that you cut course credits you come with um, once you enter college, like uh, AP credit, IB credit, because that can help you not have to take some of the introductory courses like calculus, physics, chemistry, and things like that. Can, and that also applies with majoring outside of engineering as well. So if you have those things um, already fulfilled, it will be a bit easier to do. Yeah, so a lot of places um, do, I think you can be a researcher on credit your first semester, but you can definitely, if professors allow and want you as a student, you can do it your second semester freshman year. I was able to do it with one of the professors in MNC my second semester of freshman year, so it is possible. In a time like this, is there anything we can do to make ourselves stand out more when we apply? Um, that's a difficult question. Uh, I'm having the same issue because I'm, I'm applying to graduate school. So, uh, don't know how I can answer that, to be quite honest. Um, kind of showing that you're still interested in engineering, maybe, and how that inspires you within everything that's going on. I'm sorry, I can't answer that question more readily. What has been my favorite class? I think definitely would have to be one of the labs that I've been in. So there was a manufacturing processes lab that I had to take my sophomore year and we got to do really cool things like powder processing and using a metal lathe and um, God, I forget the name of the process, but really cool kind of intensive things like that, which you only really get exposure if you're in like an official metal shop. I think that was really cool. That probably was the best class I've ever taken so far. For computer science, I have opted to take computer math and AP computer science instead of going further into the typical math pathway. Does this make me as an applicant more appealing? Um, I can't really speak for what the, um, the team looking at applications will say, but having APs as part of your curriculum that you're taking in high school will help show that you are a competitive student because you are trying to take um, the more difficult classes. So yeah, and I wouldn't say that like taking, like not taking math or anything is gonna necessarily hinder you, but that is something that um, 
the application people would know more than I do. Okay, well, thanks, Ryan, for coming. I appreciate that you guys were able to attend. I hope you learned something about the department at Virginia Tech.